This week in professional wrestling just so happened to be a fairly eventful week, a fairly historic weekend all in, and the StarCast convention are in the books. Cody Rhodes is your new NWA World Heavyweight Champion. Chris Jericho made an appearance on a non-WWE show in the United States and challenged Kenny Omega to Alpha vs. Omega 2 on the Jericho Cruise, which sails from Miami to the Bahamas at the end of October next year. So what a crazy night all in was. Let's start things off with Cody becoming the new NWA World Heavyweight Champion. It's a title his father won three times over. Uh, Dusty Rhodes was a three-time NWA World Heavyweight Champion. However, it should be pointed out that Dusty never held the title for too long. Between his three runs as NWA World Heavyweight Champion, he only held the title for a combined 107 days. You compare that to Nick Aldis, who just uh, went 265 days, I believe, with the NWA title. So with Cody's father, the drama was always in the chase of the title and not so much holding the title itself. But there was definitely a very old-school feel to... The match between Cody and Nick Aldis at All In. It felt unique from the rest of the matches on the show. There was a lot of diverse styles on the show. However, the NWA World Heavyweight Championship match, I believe the style there stood out more so for the old school flavor it has. For For those that haven't been following the NWA over the last... 10 months. Billy Corgan took ownership on October 1st last year. He had completed the purchase a few months before beforehand, but he really took ownership on October 1st. At the time, Tim Storm, who is a school teacher and was in his 50s, he was the NWA champion. Billy Corgan took over. You would have to imagine he knew he wanted to move the title on to somebody else. Likely, he always had Nick Aldis in mind as the first traveling champion of his era of the NWA. But they started with Tim Storm. They gave him a few months as champion, and they would debut the 10 Pounds of Gold YouTube documentary series, and they would follow Tim as he attempted to defend the title. He would eventually lose the title to Nick Aldis in December on a show for CZW. And then at that point, Aldis just went about his independent career, but he would always bring the NWA title with him, and he would defend the NWA title on other people's shows. And that's just the model that the NWA has gone with over the last 10 months is they've had cameras follow around the champion, and then they've played these stories out on YouTube. A lot of times Nick Aldis will be on Championship Wrestling from Hollywood, or Tim Storm was. Uh, Those episodes are available free on the Fight app, if you want to check that out. Um, But Nick Aldis is now a former champion, (laughs) having lost it to Cody. So... So we start things off, and this match was like fourth or fifth match in. So it, it, it was not, it not only did it not go on last, and didn't go on anywhere near last. As for the reasoning for this, I think Cody wanted to put on his executive producer hat for the final half of the show. And so what it sounds like is the Young Bucks were working the gorilla position for the first half. Then after Cody's match, Cody put on the headset, he worked Gorilla, and the Young Bucks were able to get ready for their match. So, it starts... So, this match takes place, like, halfway through the pay-per-view. And from the get-go, there's a different feel. Cody walks out. Cody's got Diamond Dallas Page in his corner. He's got Brandy. He's got Farrell. Each wrestler came to the ring with a fight team. And then Nick Aldis, he comes out, and in his corner... 
is another former NWA World Heavyweight Champion in Tim Storm, but also former NWA World Heavyweight Champion Jeff Jarrett. Now, Jarrett, a lot of people were a little surprised to see Jarrett in Aldis's entourage as... Uh, Jarrett and Aldis had a bit of a falling out last year. Aldis was the world heavyweight champion of Jarrett's Global Force Wrestling. Aldis, in 2017, elected not to sign another contract with Global Force Wrestling because Jarrett wanted all GFW wrestlers to have a clause in their contract that says they have to pay Jeff 10%, or Global Force Wrestling to Jeff, uh, they have to pay Jeff 10% of what they earn on the independent scene with the reasoning being they're going to be such bigger stars as a result of the star-making machine that is Global Force Wrestling uh, that they would be worth more on the independent scene, so then Jarrett should get that money. The same kind of contracts Jarrett was offering talent when he was briefly the head of TNA Wrestling uh, last year as well. And it was said to be this 10% deal that had the Hardys and and Jarrett so um, clashing heads. And I guess Jarrett had convinced Anthem that these, that putting in this 10% clause was a, you know, something reasonable to do. And of course, now in Impact Wrestling, you've got Don Callis and Scott Demore, and they've done a complete 180 from the type of contracts that Jeff Jarrett was handing out at the time. So anyway, long story short, Jarrett and Nick Aldis um, had a falling out over the contracts that Jarrett was offering for both Global Force Wrestling and Impact Wrestling. Uh, Aldis came in on a handshake deal to drop the belt, the GFW belt, to Alberto El Patron on an episode of Impact Wrestling last summer. Then he wrestled one more match for them, and then he was gone. He hasn't been back in Impact or Global Force Wrestling since. So I'll just put out a tweet this morning um, in response to Jarrett being in his entourage for this match. And long post short, basically what Aldis said is me and Jarrett did have a falling out. I think Jarrett and, and Aldis were friends before that, obviously. And uh, Aldis said he wanted, he believes in second chances and he wanted to give a second chance to the man who gave him his first chance to be a world champion. So Jarrett, Jarrett's situation these days um, is a little contentious. He's filed lawsuit, uh, filed a lawsuit against Impact Wrestling, claiming that the Global Wrestling Network is a little too close to his um, an intellectual property rights over Global Force Wrestling. Uh, also, the new titles that were uh, purchased uh, when uh, Impact and Global Force looked like they were merging. Anyway, so there's some intellectual property rights lawsuits going on uh, between Jeff Jarrett and Impact Wrestling uh, right now. Meanwhile, if you go to AAA Lucha Libra, Jeff Jarrett is teaming with guys like Brian Cage and Killer Cross, who are all making their living in Impact Wrestling right now. So that must be an interesting uh, scenario. So Jarrett, uh, of course, was let go from his role of uh, president of Impact Wrestling last year, not long after there was some concerns that Jeff was inebriated backstage at a AAA show. So Nick Aldis putting out this tweet, but going back to Cody Rhodes winning the NWA World Heavyweight Championship on Saturday night. So... This match didn't wrestle like a modern day match did either. And I think that's one of the the things that has wrestling fans so excited about this era of professional wrestling is you have all these different promotions. And many of them have a very different theory as to what professional wrestling should be. And they're presenting that. So fans are getting all sorts of different options for promotions and for styles of professional wrestling right now. If you are a big fan of old school NWA wrestling, Billy Corgan wants to cater to you. And I I think he made that very clear in this match. This was not a ring of honor match. 
It was not an Impact Wrestling match. It wasn't a WWE match for sure, uh, especially with all the blood. Uh, this was an NWA title. I mean, brought into the modern world a little bit, obviously. But the finishing sequence was... Cody reversed a sunset flip into a pinning combination. Excuse me. A la how the British Bulldog beat Bret Hart in that SummerSlam that was held in uh, Wembley. So Cody hooks the legs, gets a count of three. So this isn't, you know, every, everybody today wins with their finisher or wins with, uh, um, you know, if you're going to win with a pinning combination, it's usually like a, like a thumb to the eye and then a pinning combination or something along those lines. But this was just a straight up wrestling match one with a clever pinning combination. And just like as what would happen back in the 70s or 80s or even before then, um, right after the three count, it didn't go immediately into Cody's music. It didn't go immediately into the official uh, match result announcement. There was just a silence. A silence for long enough for the fans to take in what was happening to kind of grasp it a little bit to put as as much ve or uh uh to make the fans sort of question what they saw did we really see is this really happening it was the same thing that they did now they i mean back in the day there never used to be music let alone music that would be played the second the three count is made or the second the match ends um so I, I, the last time that I had seen this happen was at WrestleMania 30 when Brock Lesnar beat The Undertaker. There was just a moment of silence before they officially confirmed what you just witnessed. Um, in the case of Brock Lesnar Undertaker, I think WWE did that just to like, huh? Make everybody go, did I really see what I really saw? In this case, I think it was just, again, to show... This is a promotion that takes a lot of things that were done back in the heyday of the NWA that maybe have been abandoned by modern wrestling. And we're going to we're, we're gonna bring some of that stuff back. We're not going to bring all of that stuff back. But we're going to bring some of that stuff back. And it's going to be the stuff that Billy Corgan liked because he was the one that shelled out the bunny. Um, and... And that's the type of promotion the NWA is going to be. I mean, there might, I imagine there will be other stuff on it. But there was definitely a real play made at All In to showcase NWA world title matches. They're special. They're different. And they're different than, say, like a Ring of Honor world championship match or an Impact world championship match. So what you see in the NWA is going to be different than what you see in Ring of Honor. What you see in the NWA is definitely going to be different from what you see in Lucha Underground. But then the cool thing about professional wrestling these days is you'll get these shows where you get to see all of that. All right, so that's Cody winning the NWA World Heavyweight Championship. Just want to remind everybody to please hit that subscribe button to make sure you're not missing out on any news or reports from Spoiler Free Wrestling. It also helps this channel grow and be seen by more people. You can also check me out on Twitter. I'm at at Ian is a good dude, as I do try to be a good dude. You can check out our podcast. It's available uh, on iTunes and wherever you normally get your podcast. Thanks very much for your support. I'm the I Guy from Spoiler Free Wrestling.